In the annals of modern history, few names spark as much controversy and create such chilling imagery as Guantanamo Bay. Nicknamed Gitmo, this U.S. naval base is infamous worldwide, not for its strategic location, but as a detention center that housed the suspected terrorists in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. Today's video aims to peel back the veil that covers Guantanamo Bay, exploring some of the most disturbing practices reported within its fortified walls. We will navigate through this infamous facility, bringing us face to face with unsettling questions about humanity, power, and the length societies may go to in the name of national security. Welcome to Night Tales. Following the Twin Towers attack of September 11, 2001, the U.S. government established the Guantanamo Bay Detention Camp to house terrorism suspects offshore, lacking standard U.S. legal rights. This move created a unique and controversial detention facility. Situated on the southeastern tip of Cuba, this U.S. military-controlled base became operational as a detention center with an initial batch of 20 detainees on January 11, 2002, only four months after the 9-11's terrorist attack. Over time, that number increased, and now the prison holds nearly 780 prisoners from different nationalities, becoming the world's most infamous prison. Guantanamo Bay on Cuban land, but under U.S. control due to a 1903 lease, resides in a legal gray area. The U.S. argues that its unique status places detainees outside the scope of U.S. Constitution and international law protections. Due to the loophole of its location, the institution has a long history of being associated with severe penalties and violations of human rights. In the shadowy corners of Guantanamo Bay's history, waterboarding emerges as one of the most questionable practices. This method of simulated drowning involves the detainee being tied to a board, head inclined downwards, with a cloth covering their face. Water is then poured onto the cloth, inducing the sensation of drowning. The CIA's declassified documents revealed that waterboarding was used on at least three high-profile detainees, a number critics argue could be just the tip of the iceberg. It's the horrifying details that send shivers down the spine. One detainee, Abu Zubaydah, was reportedly waterboarded 83 times in a single month in 2002. His experiences became a symbol of the brutality used in the name of gathering intelligence. With waterboarding, panic sets in quickly as the airway is blocked, creating a primal fear of suffocation and death. Critics argue this technique doesn't just breach ethical boundaries, but violates international law. Yet, to our horror, this practice was being carried out at the detention center unchecked, maybe even now. Imagine not sleeping for days on end. That's sleep deprivation, and it's another harsh treatment reported at Guantanamo Bay. This method involves stopping prisoners from getting sleep, an essential human need. The way it was reportedly done at Guantanamo Bay is simple but harsh. Guards kept detainees awake for long stretches. According to official CIA documents, some prisoners were forced to stay awake for up to 180 hours. That's almost eight days without sleep. During this time, they had to stand or stay in uncomfortable positions. Lack of sleep does serious harm. People need sleep to stay healthy, both in body and mind. The sleep-deprived detainees started hallucinating, forgetting essential information, like their name, or feeling extremely anxious and borderline depressed. After a certain amount of time, they began to talk nonsense and could not form correct sentences, showing the declining mental health of someone who spent the last eight days without any sleep. Even when they had the possibility to sleep again, the harm done did not go away quickly. People need time to recover, and sometimes, their mental health can be affected for a long time after sleep deprivation. 
This shows how serious sleep deprivation can be. It's a quiet but very harmful practice that adds to the disturbing history of Guantanamo Bay. Let's now explore the mysterious realm of stress positions, a terrifying practice that echoes within the fortified walls of Guantanamo Bay. These seemingly harmless poses, when held for long periods, become instruments of torment. Stress positions involve forcing detainees into uncomfortable postures that they must maintain for extended durations. Kneeling without sitting, standing with feet spaced widely apart, or maintaining a squat are just a few examples. Reports from the International Committee of the Red Cross suggest that detainees were often forced to hold these positions for hours, even up to days in some instances. The resulting pain can range from uncomfortable to unbearable, depending on the length of time and the specific position. Over time, the body's physical strain can turn into severe pain, while the psychological stress of the expectation of ongoing discomfort adds another layer of suffering. These positions demand the body's rebellion against its natural posture, turning an otherwise simple position into a tool of torture. Solitary confinement is no less brutal for its lack of physical violence. It is a punishing procedure of near-total isolation that creates a frightening image of emptiness. In this context, detainees are placed in small cells for 22 to 24 hours a day with minimal human interaction. They are stripped of stimuli, resulting in a silent world, populated only by the echoes of their thoughts. According to the Bureau of Prisons, as of 2019, around 61 inmates at Guantanamo Bay were housed in solitary confinement units. The long-term effects of this isolation can be crippling. Detainees can suffer from SHU, Special Housing Unit, Syndrome, which includes symptoms like hallucinations, panic attacks, and uncontrollable feelings of rage or fear. Extended periods in solitary can lead to severe psychological effects, such as depression, anxiety, and even symptoms similar to post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The cruelty of solitary confinement lies in its silence. It is a depiction of the famous saying that the mind can be its own place, and in itself, can make a heaven of hell, or a hell of heaven. The manipulation of temperatures at Guantanamo Bay is a tale of two elements, fire and ice, representing extremes that served as tools of torment. Shifting between extreme heat and chilling cold, the detainees were put into a physical and psychological tug of war. Temperature manipulation involves adjusting the conditions in a detainee's cell to reach uncomfortable or even dangerous levels. This technique utilizes the raw elements of heat and cold as silent yet brutal forms of coercion. Exact numbers, like the exact temperature before detainees would faint, remains unknown due to the secretive nature of the facility. However, multiple testimonies from ex-detainees paint a picture of cell conditions alternating between severe heat that makes it extremely hard to breathe and freezing cold that chills to the bone. Physically, exposure to extreme temperatures can lead to heat stroke or hypothermia, depending on the intensity and duration. But beyond physical discomfort, there is also a huge psychological impact. The fear and uncertainty associated with never knowing when the conditions might change can create intense stress and anxiety, not to mention that it will probably lead to further sleep deprivation. Without discussing forced feeding, the dark tale of Guantanamo Bay would be incomplete. As a response to hunger strikes by detainees, officials used forceful measures to ensure sustenance, often turning the act of eating into a punishment. Detainees would have a tube inserted through their nose, typically a nasogastric one, and pushed down into their stomach. Food, in liquid form, was then fed through this tube. According to reports from 2013, 
Up to 45 detainees were subjected to this practice during a mass hunger strike. The process is not only physically uncomfortable, but can lead to severe complications if not conducted properly, especially on the digestive system. And the mental anguish associated with the invasive procedure often adds to the prisoner's distress. Physical violence behind the walls of Guantanamo Bay represents yet another dark chapter in its troubled past. Acts of violence carried out under the guise of interrogation techniques represented a frightening reality for detainees, transforming their bodies into landscapes of wounds and bruises. These methods reportedly ranged from beatings and physical assaults to even more sinister forms of harm. A Senate Intelligence Committee report in 2014 revealed instances of disturbing practices such as rectal feeding, which was medically unnecessary and used as a form of behavioral control. The implications of such practices were devastating, causing both immediate physical pain and long-term health issues. From fractures and injuries to internal damage and chronic pain, the bodily scars ran deep. Coupled with the psychological trauma of violence, the physical abuse at Guantanamo Bay was not merely a method of punishment, but a systematic destruction of human dignity. This once infamous prison, synonymous with brutal interrogations and allegations of torture, has significantly changed, but not without bearing permanent scars of its past. As of 2023, the detention center houses fewer inmates, largely due to legal battles and shifts in policy. Yet, the controversy surrounding Guantanamo continues to loom large. Legal complexities and the fallout from years of alleged human rights abuses ensure that it remains a controversial issue on the global stage. For former detainees, the journey doesn't end at release. Many struggle with long-lasting physical and psychological trauma, their lives forever marked by their time at Guantanamo. A report found that at least 61% of former detainees showed signs of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, underscoring the long-term impact of their experiences. Even today, Guantanamo Bay stands as a complex symbol of the struggle between security and human rights. Guantanamo Bay's legacy poses a critical question. How far is too far? The answer will define our moral conscience as we continue to work towards a future rooted in justice and respect for human rights. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share our channel to see further amazing content. We'll see you shortly in another exciting video.